Hello there, today I'm going to walk you through the tool panel in Affinity Publisher version 2. We will focus on the tools, the one in the panel itself on the left side of your screen. If this is your first time here, please consider subscribing for more Affinity tutorials. Alright, here we are in the Publisher version 2. And as you can see on the left side, I already select the very first tool on the list, Move Tool. That's important too because it allows us to move and transform objects. So if I grab an object, I can move it around my page. Of course, we can add some rotation to it. If you hold Shift, you will lock yourself into certain angles. More than that, we can use some hotspots to add transformation. If you hover your mouse outside, you can even do something like this. All right, so that's a very basic select, move and transform tool. I also like to switch to this move tool to not use other tools by mistake. So this is kind of my default tool that I always come back to by pressing V on my keyboard. Next tool on the list is node tool. And that's quite weird, right? We got like one cursor tool and then another one in white color. That's because the first one allow us to select the whole object and the second one will work with vector objects. So let's convert this shape into vector. All right, and now with the node tool, I can select and move just nodes, not the whole object, but the building nodes. I can even click on the line, add additional nodes, or just grab the line itself. If you've been using Affinity Designer, you are very familiar with the node tool because it's one of the basic shape building tool. All right, so that's our node tool. Just below that, there's a frame text tool. This way we can draw a little frame and then we can type the text. If you don't know the text just yet, but you wanna plan your text frames, you can go to the text panel and we can insert filler text. This way we can have some filler text, lorem ipsu, right, inside. And this way we can plan forward. We can even set up additional frame. Let's say I'm got the second one. And this way I will be able to just simply grab the first frame and link them together. So the text from the first one will continue in the second text frame, it will flow to it. So later on, if I put the actual text in, it will flow from one text box to another. So we can plan all of that with our text boxes, all right? So this is frame text tool. Below that, there's a table tool, a new addition in version two, so that's new. A proper table tool with some options here at the top. We can jump into table panel when we can modify our table, change the fill, stroke, and everything you wish to modify. It's over here in the separate panel, all right? Okay, so let's move to the next one. Next one is also some kind of text tool, but this is artistic text tool. Something we use just to type like one line of text not a long text, all right? If you got like long text, use the frame. This is more like a slogan or header, something like that. Let's just clean up a little, all right. Just below that, there is a pen tool. I will not repeat myself. I cover pen tool multiple times. So that's your tool to draw custom shapes, custom vector shapes. If you uh, wish to learn more about this pen tool, you can find a whole tutorial about that on my channel. All right, below pen tool, we got some pre-made shapes. We don't need to draw everything from scratch. We can use some pre-made shapes. So there are some stars. Call out boxes that may be useful if you're doing some comic panel and take a look. They got some special smart points with the orange color that allow us to modify them quickly. Same for the star, take a look. I can even round the star, turn it into some kind of flower really quickly. 
Of course, you can also take a look at the very top. That's some modifiers as well. So always pay attention to that. This way you can change your shapes. All right, so there's a whole section for different shapes. Below that, there is a picture frame tool. So we create a empty slot where we can put the picture. That's kind of the proper way for inserting pictures in multiple page publications. We should make those frames and then simply click replace image and place image into that. So there's a one to make rectangle. It's another one with the same function to make some kind of oval circle if you hold shift. But what if you want to put your picture into a hard shape? Not a problem. Take a look. We can actually use a regular shape like hard shape. And then we can right click on it. And we can convert this into a picture frame or convert this into a text frame as well. So we can fill it with image or with text. And then we got this X that will allow us to use a replace image function. So you can turn any shape into a image frame or text frame. Below that, there's a place image tool. We got one for merging data in layouts. There's a standard vector crop tool, not my favorite. <laughs> so let me show you. You got vector object, you can use the crop tool to hide part of it. Not my favorite way of doing that. To be honest, I prefer to use shape building techniques to just get rid of part of that part instead of hiding it. All right, below that there's a fill tool. So if there's a shape, you can use the fill tool to fill it with gradient. You can control the gradient live so you can see it while you are applying it. That's really cool. Not all software can do that in the lifetime. All right, that's nice. What else? There's a transparency to this. It's kind of like separate gradient that make a part of the shape invisible. And there's a color picker. So we can pick the color, but there's also a very new style picker below. So let's, let's try the style picker. We got a shape here and I'll apply a style to it quickly using the layer effects. Let's go for something really simple like inner glow. Okay. So we got this glow here. Let's change the color. All right, so there's a glow on this one. And we will be able to use style picker now to pick that style from another shape. That's a new addition in Publisher version two. All right, and we made it to the end of the list. There's just a default pan tool. So we got this little hand that we can kind of move ourselves around. And there's zoom tool that I never use because I prefer using my keyboard to zoom in and out by using command plus to zoom in, command minus to zoom out. This will be control plus or control minus on Windows computer. All right, and that's it. As you can see, the tool panel is much shorter, much smaller in size comparing to designer or photo. Why is that? One reason is because many things are in the separate tabs. In Publisher, we're working with tabs a lot. So we got whole tab for, let's say, for text options. We got whole tab for notes. We got the whole tab I showed before for tables, right? So we're formatting stuff in tabs, not only using tools. So we got more tabs than, let's say, in more studios than, let's say, in Affinity Designer. But the second reason is that here are just tools that are native to Affinity Publisher. But most of us already use Designer and Photo. And thanks to the studio link, we can tap into our tools from Affinity Publisher, sorry, from Affinity Designer and Affinity Photo directly from Publisher. So take a look at the top. Now I'm in the Publisher Persona. If I click on Designer Persona, it's load all the tools from Affinity Designer and I can use them in Publisher. Take a look, this is this brand new, brand new. Shape Builder, right? I can select two shapes and this is Shape Builder from Affinity Designer. Same with Next Persona, Photo Persona. Take a look. 
all of my tools from Affinity Photo version 2 are here. So that's great. That's the true potential of Affinity Publisher. Not only publisher personal tools, but actually tapping into your Affinity Designer tools and Affinity Photo tools. If you want to learn more about Affinity Designer toolset and Affinity Photo toolset, I already published videos about those two tool panels. All right. So that's enough for today. I hope this video is somehow helpful and I will see you in the next tutorial. Bye.